Yo, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back for another video. Uh, we got another Johnny Arnett video. He has a lot of uh, NBA legends he be talking about on his channel. We're going to check out uh, how good was Phil Jackson, really. Now, I keep forgetting that Phil Jackson played back in the day. We're back in, what, 50s, 60s, maybe 70s, I don't know. Um, I think he was like a, a 6'10 power forward slash center. Um, cause I keep forgetting until I see him actually on uh, 2K as one of the... Um, Legend cards, whatever like that. And um, I forgot what Timmy played on. Uh, might have been the Bulls from back in the day. I can't remember. It might have been the Knicks. I'm not sure. But we're going to see how good he was back in the day. So let's get into it. To various degrees, we all know about the greatness of Phil Jackson from a yep. coaching and leadership standpoint, yep. as he's not only arguably the greatest coach in NBA history, but he's even in the conversation of the greatest coaches in sports history. We also know about his stint as a general manager with the New York Knicks, yeah. which was disappointing to say the least, and is all the proof you need that a high basketball IQ doesn't mean you'll excel at every role within an organization. But then right. there was Phil Jackson as a player, yeah, which is the least documented the and least discussed aspect of his basketball career, which then begs the question, a little just frail how good there, of buddy. a basketball player was Phil Jackson really? Today, I'll do my best to answer that, and we'll start as we always do, by taking it back to the beginning of his career. Phil Jackson was selected with the 17th overall pick by the New York Knicks in the 1967 17th. NBA Draft. He was a lengthy 6'8 power forward who was joining a losing Knicks squad who appeared as if they were beginning to turn the corner. I couldn't find an exact measurement of Phil Jackson's wingspan, but it's definitely impressive as his extremely long arms and harassing tendencies made him difficult defensively. With that being said, he wasn't much of an offensive threat, especially earlier on in his career. In his rookie season as a 22 year old, he played in only 14.6 minutes per game and he averaged about six points and four and a half rebounds Damn. on only 40% shooting, that's, and a well below average 59% That's not good for a big man, 40%. Despite not being a scoring threat, he still managed to make the NBA's all-rookie team thanks to his energetic defense on the bench. In oh, the last dance, on, there was a brief comparison of Phil Jackson's game to Dennis Rodman's, and it's really quite incredible yeah, really? how similar he actually was to Rodman. Definitely not in terms of production, but more so in terms of their play styles. As he appeared to be somewhat awkward on the court, and he wasn't a great offensive player, but he always <laughs> played with hustle and heart, and had a strong motor that kept him going at 100%, regardless of how many minutes he played. Oh, Phil was also that's probably, extremely competitive. That's probably why Phil Jackson uh, liked Dennis Robin so much, because it reminded him of himself from back in the day. Makes a lot of sense. A trait he said he got from his mother, who was the team captain of her high school basketball team, and who Phil said was probably the most I'm sorry, I didn't what he, said. he played. Phil was also extremely competitive. A trait he said he got uh, from his mother, who was the team captain of her high school basketball team, and who Phil said was probably the most competitive person he's ever known. Which is a statement that really blows your mind, even if you think about it for just a few seconds. His game would continue to develop over time, but the progress was somewhat hindered by an ongoing issue throughout his playing career, and even in his life in general. He played in only 47 games in his sophomore season due to his chronic back issues. The pain and issues in his back were so severe that it caused him to also miss the entirety of his third season. This could have been the end of his career, but fortunately, New York held on to him and Jackson stuck with it. Despite Phil missing the 1970 season, New York still went on to win 60 games and eventually the NBA championship. Since Phil was still technically on the roster, he was granted an NBA championship. Oh, uh, he just didn't get a chance to play because of the injury. Throughout That's... his basketball career. Dang. By the time he returned to the court for the Knicks in the 1970-71 season, New York was ready to continue their dominant play, with stars like Walt Frazier that picture look kind of... Uh, why are they looking at you like that? And Willis Reed. Although they would make several deep postseason runs, oh, his year hit, wouldn't hey. come until the 1972-73 season, the field. where Jackson's Knicks won 57 games. This was far from Jackson's best season of his career, but he had made significant improvements to several aspects of his game, including his mid-range shooting. In his 17.4 minutes per game, okay, he averaged 8, 8 points, points that's and 4.3 rebounds on 44.3% shooting and get a tremendously improved 79% from the free throw line. He had now become a key contributor, mostly defensively, and his Knicks went on to win the 1973 NBA championship in five games Ooh, over the Los shadows. Angeles Lakers. Ugh. Although this was the highlight of his career from a team standpoint, yeah, he his best season too, as an individual would come two years later, as Phil had found his way into the starting lineup 
averaging nearly 30 minutes per game and putting up 10.8 points, okay, 7.7 7 rebounds, and 1.1 steals on 45.5% shooting, while also yeah, continuing his anyway. reliable defense. He certainly wasn't lacking any tenacity that season, as his aggressive defense also resulted in him leading the league in personal fouls that year. He would begin his decline from that point uh. as he advanced into his 30s, finishing out his final two seasons with the New Jersey Nets. At the end of the day, Phil Jackson would not have made the Hall of Fame simply off of his playing career, but he was an impact player on one of the great teams of NBA history, and it comes as no surprise that one of the greatest coaches ever played basketball the way coaches always preach it. Defense leading to offense, team first, yep. and with hustle and heart throughout the entirety of the contest. Yep. Obviously, considering my age, everything I shared in this video is based off of lots of research and all the footage I could witness of Ooh, the that just so Oh that my being god. Said, if you're someone who witnessed him play, I oh. care tremendously to hear your perspective on just how good Phil Jackson was as a basketball player. As for the rest of you, let me know in the comment section if you think Phil Jackson is the greatest coach in NBA history. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hi, bro. Oh. Uh, mm. Well. Well, well, well. Phil Jackson, as a player, first off, he's a great coach. Great, great coach. Top three. Probably alongside with. If he. Okay, let's, let's say. It's kind of hard. Well, it's not hard, but you can't say he's the greatest. But you can't say he's the greatest. But I don't know. Uh, between him and like Coach Pop, who is still currently coaching, he probably like will coach the next couple of seasons, probably before he retire. Um, who else? Uh, Jerry Sloan was a great coach. Uh, who else? Uh, Rick Carlisle is a great coach. But other than that, um, as a player, Phil Jackson. Oh. Uh, most ever score of the season was like what ten a game, and his field goal percentage it was it's kind of low to be a big man guy. A lot of big men their averages probably like in the maybe low to mid fifties, maybe high forties, like forty eight, forty nine, something like that. But um, to be a big man, you know, he must have took a lot of bad shots and like I don't know just. That's, just, I, that's one thing I would kind of look at with big man for us, like they scoring and stuff like that. Uh, they percentages. Uh, I feel like if you're under 50 and you're a big man, that's, that's not good. De depending on what kind of shots you're taking, i put it like that. Depending on what kind of shots you are taking. So, I don't know. In the video, he showed him showing, shooting a lot of uh, mid-range shots. So, maybe that was it. But he shooting a lot of contested mid-range shots that he was missing. And not posting up and stuff like that. And hitting high percentage shots. So that could be the case, but anyway, um, let me know what you guys think about Phil Jackson as a player, how good he was. I will say he wasn't a great player, but he was a good, like, role player, um, good hustler. Um, not going to say he was a great rebounder, but he was a decent rebounder. That one year, he averaged, like, what, 10-something points, uh, and, like, Almost eight rebounds a game. That's pretty, that's real good, actually. But um, enough talking. But let me know what y'all think about the video and um, subscribe for more videos and comment anybody else you want me to react to and stuff like that. And I will make sure I will do that. And um, peace.